Drink like three cups of coffee, I'll get ready for the webinar. I'm like, well then, this the finale. <laughs> Anyways, back to work. So CJ, what's Web 3.0 and how does crypto and blockchain technology factor into it? In order to understand Web 3, why don't we first understand Web 1 and Web 2? So Web 1 is like the 95, 1995 to 2000 era where it's read only. It's basically like you go on you know, a site and you're looking at like Time Magazine or so whatever. So old people, yes. Yeah, yeah, boomer web. Yes. So Web 2 is like social media interaction. It's when you could actually leave comments on posts. Um, you know, you could log into certain services. You could um, interact with your friends, um, all that good stuff. The problem is, it, you know, the Web 2 kind of got siloed into these very large corporations, like 10 of them that you could probably think of and name on, on one hand. You know, the Googles, the, the Facebooks of the world. And all the value that they create um, ultimately only goes to the largest shareholders of, you know, the Facebooks, the Googles, the Amazons. However, Web 3 takes that ability and ultimately makes it so that, you know, you could, like in Web 2, you couldn't own HTTPS, you couldn't own the actual network. The value that was created was absorbed by those siloed companies. But in the Web3, as users, not only do we eliminate those intermediaries, but we also have the ability to own the actual internet or that network the way that we couldn't own HTTPS. So for instance, you know, with all of those, if you think that there's gonna be a ton of new applications uh, built on top of Ethereum, like there were websites built on top of the internet, then you can actually invest in the Ethereum protocol by buying Ether. So that is one of the differences between Web 2 and Web 3, and it's why uh, Web 3 requires a cryptocurrency in the majority of cases. Makes sense. I got it.